frankly speaking, it's the very first day of my life that I am in Silicon Valley of India. And uh, looking at all those amazing talks, I got a gist of it that uh, why it's called a Silicon Valley, right? And uh, yesterday night, I, we, I am arrived with my colleague, Mr. Jitain from Delhi, and the climate is like really beautiful here <laughs> compared to Delhi where it's freezing a lot. So uh, today my topic uh, is uh, that I'm going to talk on the state of the Indian open source ecosystem and Bagisto. Some call it Bagisto, some call it Bagisto, I call it Bagisto. <laughs> and uh, implementing GDPR policy across our company. So before I move on, I would like to first of all thanks the company, Zeroda and Frappe, for organizing this wonderful event and giving us a chance to showcase our open source product. Thank you very much. So, a uh, free software activist named Mr. Richard Stallman, he tells that open source is a development method, but free software is a social movement which we all should join on. Now, before I go into a detail of growth story at Bagasto, I just want to quickly like uh, state some facts which we uh, like think that wh what is the current analysis of the Indian e-commerce eco open source ecosystem. So, we know that uh, Indians are very skillful. A lot of Indians are working in big MNCs, even the CEOs are also Indian. So definitely there is no problem in the skill. But uh, we think that uh, there might be a, some kind of problem with the mindset. The very first thing is the need of validation. What it means that uh, we have a feeling that whenever in India, like uh, any, anyone, uh, when we want to make use of any product or service, we first of all do a research, a lot of research, that how many people are using it, uh, whether a big company or big name is associated with that product or not. If it is there, then we feel safe to use it. Otherwise, we do not take a risk with a new product. So that's the kind of a validation which every Indian seeks for. Then the investor-funded startup ecosystem, like uh, wh wherever you go to any startup ecosystem or like hackathon going on where startup challenges are going on, there are a lot of startups pitching their ideas. But there's one thing which is common with the startups is the, like, their business model. Uh, basically, they all have a, like, a paid business model which attract the investor to invest in them. However, the situation is very much different uh, like outside India where like, open source are getting a huge investment from like, the investor, even uh, acquiring is also going on. Then, digital and print promotion. So there are like many companies writing blogs and making videos that with startup got funded last week, this week. But open source promotion is something which we thought is very much lacking here. Because so when we started with Begisto, I tried to approach many companies to like uh, uh, like uh, write a story on us or cover us. But uh, they, the very first question they asked me that how many money you have raised or like uh, how, how you are like being funded by anyone or not. So these are the questions which they asked me, but because we know that open source is all about giving back to community. And right now we are totally working in a bootstrap way. We are not being funded by anyone. So this is one thing which we think that this promotion, print promotion is also lacking for the open source. Then about carrier. So many people who are coming from like colleges right now, they also do a research on which company they are joining. And they have also kind of a mindset that, like in Delhi NCR, what we have observed that uh, when, they, when the uh, students see that this company is making a product, which is hugely popular, and it's a paid product, then okay, they feel safe to join that company because okay, uh, the carrier will be fine, I will be getting good, getting good salary. But when they think that okay, this company working on an open source project that is giving everything for free, and suppose in future if this project fail, so they, they hesitate to join that thing. So these are the few things which we have analyzed in the current open source Indian ecosystem. So what does that lead to? So before coming here, I just saw a talk of Mr. Vishwam Mehta he gave uh, at a distillation event. He tells that in 2008 when we started, it seemed the right way to build a software. In 2019, it's a no-brainer. If you're writing a software which will sustain over a period of time, it has to be an open source. I think this is something which we can all relate to. Thank you, Mr. Vishwam, for that. So now I will move on with the journey of Begisto. So Webkul is a parent company of Begisto. Webkul was founded in 2010 by Mr. Vipin Sahu and Mr. Vinay Yadav. So Webkul is like a word derived from two words, web and kul. Kul have, we have taken a word from Gurukul. However, uh, in our reference, we use it as a like community because from the very first day, we have been working on open source project and we have been like contributing a lot in the community. So we take it as a like a web community 
with the name Webcool. So we are the single biggest company from India in e-commerce domain who works on a wide number of frameworks. In fact, we have been working on 22 frameworks, 90% of which are open source. Then Magento, a hugely popular e-commerce framework, we made way uh, for four times in the innovation lab with our innovative products like PWS Scan and Go, AR product sizing, Mobicool AR product navigator, and machine learning search. We have been ranked five times by Deloitte in Tech Fast 50. These are, our, these are our respective rankings from 2015 to 2019. And these are our Asia Pacific ranking for the last five consecutive years. Now, two times we have been awarded by Magento as the best selling extension partner uh, once in 2017 and next in 2018. Uh, last year only, we have been awarded as a like uh, enterprise best enterprise venture by smart CEO from for Start Fifty by none other than TV Mohandas Pai. And let's come back to the event. So we have made a habit that uh, 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 it's like we have taken a huge step of organizing uh, meetups, hackathons, workshop, almost uh, like every month. So. In total Delhi NCR, we are the very first company who are like organizing these events every month and which are totally based on open source. Either it's framework like Symfony, Laravel, Magento, OpenCard, or e-commerce framework or anything. The main idea was to organize the event in and around the open source. In December of 2018, we organized the very first Symfony India Meetup. And if anyone who is working on PhD framework must know this man, it's Fabian Potential, the CEO of Sensio Labs, the company behind Symfony Framework, which has truly made the PhD framework a lot more standard. So basically, he was our, one of our guest speakers at that particular event. Next, we organized our very first Aquino India Meetup last like June 2019 where we have CEO of Aquino and these people as guest speakers, as Fred D. Gombord, uh, Benal Jokamant, the CTO of Aquino, Salvatore Acaputo, the CEO of Tessa, and uh, Mr. Dressler as CEO of In Between. Then we also organized the very first OpenCard India Meetup where we have Mr. Daniel Kerr as the founder of OpenCard and our guest speaker. Now, these are a few of our contribution to open source. Now, open source is something which is there in our DNA, and we have been working quite a lot. So it's like uh, uh, from, the, from the very first day when we started, I saw an open source, and it's because of that, those projects only, uh, is because why we are standing here right now. So it, there's a thing that uh, whenever, like in any fiscal year, when we make a good profit, so instead of buying a Porsche or Bentley, we try to develop a new open source team. Symphony was one of our experiment in which we made the UV desk application. Then Laravel is also one of our open source experiment on which we made Bagesto. Then there are other open source projects like Micron.js, CoolHue, Vivid.js, and Kulo. So these are the famous open source projects which we have made in the company. So what exactly is Bagesto? So you see where I'm coming from. It's not that uh, we are sleeping in a night and we got the idea that, okay, you need to make a Bagesto. It's not like that. Bagesto does not appear as a Eureka moment for us. It's basically our 10 years of e-commerce e experience. We have been working for past 10 years on all the frameworks. We know the ins and outs, the advantage, disadvantage, everything of the e-commerce framework. So we found what exactly is missing in those frameworks and it's because of those things Bagesto came into being. So when I talk about Bagesto to anyone, everyone relates Bagesto to just another e-commerce framework like Magento, WooCommerce, or OpenCart. But Bagesto is not just another e-commerce framework. So what is Bagesto? Bagesto is de definitely a platform-driven commerce. So what does it mean is that, uh, suppose uh, like the new uh, guys who come from college, they work on PhD framework or any MVC kind of architecture like Laravel or Symfony. I will take example of Laravel because it's the most popular framework used across nowadays and Vue.js also. So suppose there is a guy in Laravel, he wants to develop an e-commerce framework. He has two ways to do that. Either he will write the entire e-commerce from scratch, but for that he need to understand the entire e-commerce logic. Or he move on to a different framework like Magento or WooCommerce. But for that, he need to understand their structure. So basically what we see that, the learning curve gets bigger and bigger. So what is Bagesto? Bagesto is totally a platform-driven commerce. It means that anyone 
who is working on Laravel can easily work on Begisto because Begisto inherits all the feature of Laravel. So in future, if anyone is looking to build an e-commerce site on Begisto, you do not have to search for a Begisto developer. Instead, you just need to search for a Laravel developer, which I think the Laravel is currently the most popular framework. And in every like cubicle, one out of four developers are working on Laravel. So that's the like a very big USP of Begisto that is totally a platform-driven experience. Then post-commerce solution. So it's not just e-commerce I'm talking of, it's basically the post-commerce solution. You want to build your own POS system, your PWS system, your like marketplaces, B2P, B2C, C2C, dropship application, mobile application, Bagisto is a solution for all. You can build all those applications using, using Bagisto. Now let me come to an initial roadblock which we faced while starting with Bagisto one year back. So Mr. Linus Torvalds, he told, tells that in open source, we feel strongly that to really do something well, you have to get a lot of people. And that's the one thing which I think uh, is the main challenge for us. And that is building communities. So it was very hard for us to convince people at the start that why they should use Begisto. Because currently in light, light of situation, there are a lot of e-commerce in the ecosystem. Magento is there, WooCommerce is there, Cilius is there. Means why they would come for Begisto, right? So that's the one thing which we face a very major challenge. However, we feel that uh, there are a few things which uh, I think we hit the right spots from last one year. Some of the things are like uh, fast release, then uh, like uh, fast 24 seven support, then precise documentation, and like helping people like, like, any, like any time with, when they ping us. So we tell people that if you have any query with Begisto, you don't need to email us, you don't need to raise a ticket, we are just a ping away. So I think uh, it's the reachability of Begisto, like it's the, uh, you can say like that people feel much more like uh, uh, convenient or comfortable in using Begisto because they know that whenever I will get any issue, I will just go and ping on their live chat and they will help me. Otherwise, I like uh, if I'm working on Begisto, if I feel that uh, I need to raise a ticket for that, then after 24 hours, I will get a solution, I will go certainly. But that is one thing which we totally ignored and we, told customer that we are just a ping away, not just an email away. And there's also one interesting story, uh, story I would like to tell about building communities. So uh, Begisto started uh, around like November 2018 and uh, we built a lot of modules like marketplaces and POS. After like uh, six or seven months, uh, there's one like uh, developer who's working in Lucknow uh, what he did that he actually built up a uh, module on Begisto and he made his first sale. So what he told me f like a few months back that when I made up, when I will make a first sale, I will donate some amount to Begisto. So after six months, he ma made a module and that module sold on our marketplace and he donated $10 to Begisto. I think that was a something, a kind of a, like a, a very huge moment for us in which we realized that we have uh, built us something that is actually creating a value to the community, right? However, we refunded that amount by telling that uh, right now we are in the process of building community, uh, not in the process of raising investment. We, we just want right now that you, you work on Begisto, build models on Begisto, so other, other customers can also join us, other contributors can also join us. So that is one thing which uh, I, I think a uh, very special moment for us in which we like uh, help the community uh, to grow. Now let me talk about uh, one year of accomplishments. So within a period of one year, uh, we have got more than 1800 plus GitHub star. Uh, today, I think uh, it's 1850, might be, I, I'm not sure, but is it like that? Then we have got more than 12,000 downloads. We have built a very strong community of 1,000 members across Facebook forums, uh, Facebook and forums. And uh, we have also like uh, got more than 50 plus contributors who are directly working on Begisto. And also we have grown our user base from zero to 100K in past one year. Also, we have released the very first multi-tenant SaaS e-commerce platform. It's a very unique model in the market by which you can easily make your own Shopify or big commerce kind of a system. Then we also launched the very first open source headless PWA application. PWA can certainly be a game changer in the remote areas of Asia and, and Africa. Then what to expect from Begisto in coming future? 
So certainly we are trying to appoint open ambassador in different different country. So we have already done that. Starting with that, we have like got few ambassadors in Colombia and Thailand. We are soon going to appoint open ambassadors in other countries who are going to take forward Bagesto in their own e-commerce ecosystem. Then uh, very much, very like uh, soon we are going to move Bagesto into a microservice architecture. And also right now Bagesto is like using REST API, but very soon we are going to move into the GraphQL APIs too. And also this is one thing which we are targeting, a business application platform. So basically what we are trying to do is to divide or make Bagesto into, into a component based system. Uh, so we are going to divide Bagesto in different, different components. So in future, you want to create your ERP, you want to create your CMS, whatever you want, you can use the component of Bagesto and create your own system. So these are the few coverage we have got uh, from past one year. So uh, this uh, like month only open source for you. There's a magazine they cover the story of our CEO, Mr. Vipin Sau, where he like uh, uh, defined upon the uh, open source like uh, situation in India and the growth story of Bagesto. Then like on 13th of March, like there's a beta page which lists startups. So we have been trending on 13th of March on beta page. And on like 30th March, Laravel News also covered us in their platform. These are a few of our testimonials, which we, uh, of many testimonials which we have got from uh, various customers on Twitter, on like Trustpilot, on, on our website. So uh, breaking the myth. So it's like uh, outside when we talk about India, uh, we talk a lot about our culture and tradition. But when we talk about India in, this, in contribution to modern science or open source, uh, we think of it zero. Like, the, like when we talk about with the foreign people, they, when we see that this is a thing which we made in India, they take it very much casually. They think that, okay, this is made from India, this should be like some, some kind of a, like a buggy software. So I think we need to change the situation. I think we all are something working on that. Because open source is something which we should strive for. And at the end, I would like to end my talk that uh, however we are working in open source, at last, India should be an open source nation. Thank you.